Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from Razor Emporium. I am so excited to be gathered here today with a dear friend, Chris Kirchin from Car Shaving. What is up, buddy? How are you? Thank you. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. We got another scorching episode of Double Edge Discourse. We get together with another maker and I get to basically interview him. And Chris is joining us all the way from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He came down for the third annual Arizona Shavers Meetup. I am excited. Uh, Mr. Chris brought me something called Canadian Tuxedo. And apparently this is an exclusive from the McDuff Soap Company. That's correct. And they're also in Edmonton, five minutes from your shop. Yes. Yes. And uh, something that was a Canadian exclusive, like on a forum or something? Yeah, it's a Facebook group. It's actually the first Facebook group I ever got into. A friend of mine released a couple of early pictures of the Christopher Bradley. That was one of the groups and got the first bit of momentum. Uh, it looks good. Maple, citrus, geranium, spice, basil, oak moss, musk, sea salt, sandalwood. That is a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> Yes, but comes off real nice. And obviously, Canadian Tuxedo on the label. Yeah. That is denim <laughs> to the max. I like the name. I like the look. I like the smell and the fact that he's a buddy of yours. I'm excited to try it. Absolutely. And you, I, I insisted, so we swapped soap. So I insisted you use something of ours. Yes. I use some of yours. I've got 1977. That's right. Really heavy on a musk, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, tobacco. Tobacco, rose, clove, rose, uh, patchouli. Patchouli, yeah. Right out of the 70s. Anybody that follows my Instagram knows that 77 is my birth year. Oh, so, you know, even cooler. Lucky sevens. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked to use this. Nice. Well, I'm going to throw a little pre-shave on before, just because I almost always do. Plus, I always tell people, as you are now seeing, we're not jumping out of the shower. We're no. basically almost equivalent of dry shaving. You know? Yeah, it's... So, uh, Shower was like 10 hours ago. <laughs> so any prep possible, I'll go for. And I haven't even said it. We're this far in the video. Guys, if you didn't know it, Chris is the owner, operator, designer of Carve That's right. Shaving. So if you guys have seen the, the Carve Razors from Canada, the beautiful brass and stainless steel razors, this is yep. the guy. And aluminum. And aluminum, excuse yes. me, behind all these razors. In fact, that's what we're using today. That's correct. Yes. So the Bison is aluminum only at the moment. Uh, all the other models, the CB, the Christopher Bradley, and the Overlander are aluminum, brass, stainless, copper. Okay, I have to ask this. Is Christopher Bradley like CBD, like that guy? Who no. is Christopher Bradley? No, so I'm Christopher, and Bradley is Brad uh, Melling. He's the guy that got me into wet shaving in okay. uh, 2016. He saw what I was doing on my carved machine Instagram machining. Reached out and said, you should do a DE razor. And I said, what the heck is a DE razor? <laughs> uh, and then he showed me, uh, and eventually he sent me a care package. And I got to the point where I'm like, let's dive head in. Uh, fat Handle Tech was my first shave. Okay. Uh, feather Blade. Classic. Didn't know any better. Oh my gosh. And uh, a couple of necks, but a great shave. Nice. Yeah. Uh, with um, Williams uh, Mug Soap. Like the cheapest soap on the market. Cheapest soap. Yeah. yeah. But it reminded me of my dad, so I got started right then and there. Um, it was uh, it was a great shave, and pretty much right away I realized I was going to uh, be designing a razor, but a brush was actually my first thing, my first product. To give our viewers who don't know the whole story, because I don't even know the whole story, you already own the machine shop. You were yep. basically a contract manufacturing shop for oil and gas. I know that part. That's right. So you're making stuff, but they're not razors yet. And, and you're making widgets and sprockets and, you know, whatever, gasket sealed. I don't know. I'm just making words up here. What All of the above. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, there you go. did some consumer products. Uh, I did some stuff for uh, motorsports. So if anybody out there uses a snowmobile, uh, we did a uh, product for a customer called the Super Clamp. It holds down a snowmobile on okay. a pickup truck bed. Some consumer electronics. Sure. And uh, when pot was becoming legal in Canada, <laughs> we did some testing equipment design. Okay. Uh, that was one of the big products before um, before the shaving kind of hit it full time. Right. Like anything, it was tough to keep afloat. We had a recession in 20, uh, 2014, 2015, 2016. So it made it tough. So shaving came out of that. Right. And yeah, when we were naming the product, uh, I was going to originally call it something like the KSC 2000 because I'm an engineer and that's the kind of creativity I have. Well, you know, I'm this far into it and we must have sold a, a lot of these, dozens and yeah. dozens of your razors and uh, probably close to over 100, right? maybe. Anywho, and I never knew the backstory, so now I know. I just figured it was someone in the community or your dad or I don't know. I was like, his name's Christopher Kirchin. It's not Christopher Bradley. <laughs> well, I do get emails that say Christopher Bradley. Uh, how are you doing? That sort of thing. That's fine. I get emails where people call me Mark and Mike. So, <laughs> by the way, my name's Matt. 
If you didn't already know, Mad Pistaristic Razor Emporium, please like, share, subscribe to our <laughs> channel. <laughs> um, no, this is great. I am really enjoying this scent and it lathered fantastically. I've got a nice big Santa Claus beard. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a face lather, so it just went on super easy. I, I think it, it jumped in volume just because the pre-shave, I kind of gave it yep. to, uh, to amplify, multiply, maximize my shave experience here. Now I'm a bull lather. So. I, we, <laughs> you know, he, he came here and I said, you I got came unprepared. <laughs> and I, I don't even have a bull in the building, guys. Yeah. I, I, we looked around before we shot. I was like, no bull for him. So, so we're torture testing 1977. Yes. Still it's looking good. good. It's looking yeah. like a pretty good lather. It, uh, yeah, that should be good. Yeah. The, the, only, the only mistake you made, the rookie move is wearing a collar. I know. <laughs> I know. I, uh... <laughs> I should have said something before we started. But I was like, maybe he really knows what he's doing here. My facial hair goes like clear down below my Adam's <laughs> apple. So I, I, it's, it's way down there. Um, okay, so we talked about the bison. This is the brand new thing, uh, aluminum razor from Carve. And I have not touched it. I've not seen it. So I like to have this genuine experience with you guys. So beautiful, handsome box, mm -hmm. simply packaged. You're not going to have it get damaged with all this yep. uh, crinkle paper in it. And so it comes with a um, nice little advertisement for thanking you for yep. buying a product. We get a QR code. Is this like an instruction manual or how yeah, to shave? Yeah, it just goes to the knowledge base on a store. Great. Uh, Care of aluminum. Yep. That's nice to see because yeah. half people don't even know what they're doing. And then a nice sticker. That's right. And what's the, what's the retail price point on this? 99 Canadian. So about 100 bucks Canadian. Uh, so 80, 80 70. 70, yeah, US. Okay. And uh, is this something that uh, Razor and Point can carry? Eventually, yes. <laughs> Eventually, yes. yes. I don't want to put you on the spot. Let's get it going. I'm going to load this guy up with a Permasharp blade. Perfect. And what did you bring to shave, my well, dear friend? I originally brought a brass overlander. Uh, and then this morning I found out that it's no longer a brass overlander. Ah! It's a gold-plated overlander. Um, I've only seen these before. Okay. I've never held one in my hand. The finishing is immaculate. And I'm not saying that because I finished it. Uh, I'm saying on top of the, uh, on top of the brass, that gold is beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, it, it's very nicely done. You can still see a lot of the detail underneath, uh, but where it matters, the gold is flawless. Thank you. Uh, very well done. That's something that we really like doing with, with the modern razors is having the ability to do customization of finishing, cool. polishing, uh, gold. The threads are still really smooth. Yes, rhodium, yeah, nickel. Wow. So something exclusive to Razor Emporium. Wow. Yeah, and it's, um, it's gold flash on everything. That looks great. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. I was noticing as I was loading, was there a serial number in here? I already there covered it. There sure is. Okay, that's cool. Did you see what's in front of the serial no, number? No, let me take it back apart. <laughs> I, I, I was quickly loading the blade as you were complimenting me, so I had to... I have was... to grab a blade from you. I, uh... Okay, I got, yeah, I got blades right here. T4-00226, T4. Yeah. Oh, the Gillette yes. Decode system. Good. Yeah. I'm, I am so happy another maker is doing that. Yeah, and actually you were the final push in me deciding to do that uh, when we met in Idaho. Great. You know, I tell people all the time that there's razor makers like uh, Gem, Schick, you know, uh, Ever Ready, all these wonderful razor makers, Mercur, and there's no way of, of doing any kind of dating with them. They didn't put a single mark on there. And I wasn't going to be pompous enough to think that my specific system was going to last. I was like, let's just hop on the yeah. Gillette, you know, that's got 70, 80 years of date code history. Uh, so let's just use that. Well, and they ran out after a while. Yeah. Because they stopped. And so, yeah, I, so I did the math and I got to T4. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, is this right? So I asked uh, ChatGPT and it says, yeah, T4 is right. I'm like, okay, well. They skipped Q. Yes. That's only 25 characters. And I, I know that because of your site. So <laughs> I, I went and checked, is T4 the date code for this time of this year? And your site came up. Good. I'm yeah. happy to hear that. Well, I just refreshed my lather slightly because we've been blabbing. <laughs> That's okay. Good idea. It's all good. I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm excited to try the bison from Carve Shaving. I heard you say it bison or bison. You said it with a little... Bison. But you said it with a little French-Canadian kind of... Bison. Bison. There bison, That's what yes. it was. Bison with a Z. Slide that S. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This is definitely... Feels like it's going for the Goldilocks. Yes. You're not trying to do super aggressive. You're not trying to do super mild. And I'm, I'm assuming there's no plates with this. It's just a one. Just the one and done. Uh, you so know, it's a three and a half inch handle because um, that's the most common. Yes. In in our Overlander and our Chris Rubrati lines. Um, so why mess with what works? 
I like it. It's very cool looking. It looks really techy and modern, but then also just has some, some classic lines to it. I like the, the neural pattern. You guys are also anodizing in-house, is that correct? That's correct. Wow. So, yeah, that razor start to finish, uh, the only thing we don't do is the raw material. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah, it, and, uh, it has been a labor of love to get that anodizing to work properly, but in yes. the end, it is wonderful to be able to put parts in raw and have them come out those colors. Nice. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It is, it is very comfortable. It reminds me of a tech razor in that kind of that same vein yeah. where the tech just worked for everybody. This is a, something that will work for everybody. Yeah. So one of the things with that and the Overlander to some degree is there's a pronounced face where it contacts the skin. Mm -hmm. And that helps keep it mild, but allows us to increase the blade gap and the efficiency so that, uh, you know, it's just not mild and that's it. Yeah. It does have some efficiency behind it. I gotta say this, uh, this feels like an overlander. It, uh, <laughs> the gold plating does not change it. No, and that's a common question we get. Uh, we're doing such small amount of polishing, metal removal is really not there, so it's people, and then the plating, people think it's so thick, it's not. It's, it's, it's atoms thick, you yeah. know, it's, it's very, very small. On the assembly, we got the tabs that go into the slots. Right. And that tolerance on our end is extremely tight. Right. Uh, so if even if you put five tenths of gold on here, you're probably going to cause this to not go together. Right. Definitely enjoying those. This is I I I, uh, I say this lovingly, but this is something that could compete with Henson. Thank you very much. Was that something that kind of in your in your vein? Yeah. So it, obviously we're aware of uh, we're aware of the market. We yeah. make high end razors. They're yeah. at a price point. Uh, costs are going up. Try to mitigate that every way possible. One of the ways is we start to reduce the options. So a brand like Henson, that's what they do. They have one model. Um, they really know what their target audience is. And and I say that because and I, I really adore Henson. We sell a lot of Henson razors. In fact, the owner's coming out this summer and he hit me up. He wants to get together and see the shop and hang out. I'm looking forward to seeing Jonathan. Um, I... I, there could be some mixed feelings out there from the audience, but I think Henson has done a phenomenal job oh, getting yeah. people into the market. Uh, you know how many times I hear, have you heard of this razor yeah. on Facebook? The yeah. Henson? And, and, yes. and they may be the $70 US introductory razor, but anyone who's serious about this hobby will get a Carve, will get a Blackland, yep. will get a Rex, whatever else, a Gillette. It's an entry. It's a gateway. It is. It is. And they're not going to uh, they're not gonna go, this one's better than the other one. It's different. Exactly. There's a place for all of it. Exactly. Well, you weren't kidding about my color. <laughs> <laughs> all good, my friend. All good. Next time, I'll bring a bowl. Are you already finished up? No, no. This is first pass. Okay. You're yeah. okay. So you're multiple no, pass. I, I was trying to slow down. I didn't want to... Uh... I do two. Okay. That's good. Two seems reasonable. I do two without talking, usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a one and done. I just kind of do some buffing along the way, and I'm usually good. I um, When I do three... It's because I'm enjoying the shave, but I usually regret the extra passes. Yes. Uh, especially on the neck. Um, Absolutely. I'm but, indoors a lot, so it, yes. it doesn't get weathered like uh, like the rest of my face would. Exactly. Tender tender neck is pretty common for most wet shavers out there. Yeah. In fact, it's one of the reasons I hear the, the most uh, yes. of why you get into this. Absolutely. Trying to get a... Uh, especially for guys who have to wear a shirt and tie. I know when I used to work in uh, healthcare, I had to wear a shirt and tie every day. And that's actually why I started looking for these razors. Yeah. I was getting torn up from having to turn my neck constantly at this tie. I was like, God, this, this Mach 3 is just really killing me. There's yeah. got to be a better way. When you start to realize when you're in wet shaving just how many things can irritate your skin. Yes. And it's not just, you know, the products we use. It's just things we wear. It's the environment we're in. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I tell anybody that's starting when they uh, we get to talking about it in Edmonton is just how dry it is in Alberta. You so, mentioned you're a balm guy. A balm guy, yeah. Uh, in the summer, maybe not. Um, May, June to maybe September. Right. Uh, splashes are great, but once it starts getting dry, my skin starts to lose that uh, retained moisture. Uh, it gets really tough. I'll actually start to flare up on, on splashes. Mm. Uh, and even some of the frags will do it. For, for the longest of time in my wet shaving journey, I couldn't use splashes. I would say by the first three or four years, I was balm exclusive. Every time I put a splash on, my, my skin would just look red and, and irritated, and it would just inflame everything. Yep. Only in the last five, four or five years have I gotten to a point where my skin is, is good, and I can throw a splash on, and it's not going to do that. I wonder if it's the machine shop that's doing it for me. <laughs> it's just it's funny because, you know, I've said this story before, but I'll, I'll tell, tell it again. My... 
I'm the only one apparently in my family that that has a, a sensitivity to shaving. I, you know, I, my memory of my dad growing up was him walking around the house at night, locking the doors with an electric brawn shaver. Just, yeah, yeah. But this door's locked for good days, going to bedtime. Yep. And so I was like, okay, electric. And so I remember, you know, Christmas, when I turned 13 or 14, I got an electric razor for him. And I was just like, oh, God, this is horrible. Yeah. Especially once they start to get a little dull. Yeah. And then I watched my older brothers, you know, I was in college and I, I was starting to shave a lot more. I'm like, what's my brother, you know, using? I, I snuck in his bathroom and looked and he just had a Mach 3 and, you know, edge gel, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at his skin and he's got a perfect complexion, no irritation, no ingrown hairs. I'm like, well, how is he getting this? I have the same skin, the same, you know, DNA. You know, skip the sibling. Yeah. My brother, um, he does against the grain neck passes first pass. No wow. Yep. Um, he didn't even know it was a taboo thing until we got to talking about it one day. Yeah. Isn't that kind of funny? Like, um, this is kind of like a, something I always think about. It, I don't know what it is, but a lot of guys have issues or they have like an embarrassment almost of talking about their shaving routine. Whereas you hear ladies, you know, and girls, they have absolutely no problem talking about all the primping, all the makeup, all the eyebrows, the lashes, the, you know, they, they'll they just like outright oh, with it. And guys are like, oh, I, I don't know, I just, I do the thing, I just... Blah, blah, blah. So the working theory I have <laughs> is guys like to figure things out. Ooh, okay. And when you come into the picture and say, you know, I, I, I figured out this other way that goes against what they've figured right. out themselves, it's an affront to them. It's so an affront to their thought process. They're 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 um, threatened by it. Exactly, it's threatening their their ability to figure it out for themselves. Exactly, and I, I also have had a lot of customers. And I did that too. At the beginning, I did that too. <laughs> I have a lot of customers that, that that fits the bill. What you're saying, they'll reach out to me, but they're almost like like they have to like use like a a, a pseudonym, like a, a fake name, like oh, yeah. Hey, I I don't know who else to talk about. Like they're meeting me like in a back alley, like. <laughs> this is something I'm ashamed to bring to you, but I'm having issues shaving. I'm like, it's all good. I mean, I that's even, why we're here. Even to the point where I've had guys send me pictures of like irritation on their face, and then they blur their eyes out. <laughs> they like they put the little block over their eyes. I'm like, I'm seeing your inflamed yeah. neck. It's okay. I can see your eyes. You don't have to blow those out. We're not going to do anything with this. Yes, exactly. Helping. Yeah, we want to help exactly. So I want our viewers who don't know about carb shaving, what are some things, so we know it's made in Canada, we know it's all done in house, like yep. you said, except the raw materials, you're doing all the steps of designing, the production, the finishing, the packaging, everything's right there. What are some things about carb shaving that you would love our audience to know? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's obvious, we're a small business. Okay, uh, and how small? Uh, two people and a part-time. Wow, so, so that's like micro. That's micro, yeah. exactly. All of us are wet shavers. That's uh, awesome. Yep, yeah, I'm usually, Daily wet shaver, mm -hmm. um, except when it gets busy. So right. the last little bit, uh, I've been shaving less, but okay. because of work, uh, because of razor making. We talk about it a lot, but I, quality is number one in the shop. Actually, <laughs> number one is safety. So I believe <laughs> yeah. we're running a very safe ship. Yes. Uh, so everything we do is not at the expense of anybody. But yes, yeah. quality is then the next best thing. Uh, we do that across the board. Uh, my quality uh, system is extremely strict. So much so that if anything at any point fails or looks like it's going to fail, it's instantly quarantined. Wow. So we take that seriously. Every single razor that goes out is inspected by me and me alone. Wow. That's and, huge. Yeah. It's time consuming. When I've got 100 razors in front of me, that is, I got the bright light, I got the magnifying <laughs> lens, I got the music on, and... That's, That's huge, guys. Yes. I, I do the checkouts for the revamp service, and it, you're right. It is, it's mind-numbing. You go yep. one after another, and you just want to, you know... And, and the other thing I tell my guys, I'm at the point where I'm no longer polishing the razor. I do all the plating yep. still. I do, you know, I plated that today just, just for today's shoot. But it's actually, I, I don't have an emotional connection to rejecting it. No, and you, yeah, so I always. That's the thing, because yes. when, you, when you did the process yourself, you're like, oh, I knew how hard this was. I don't want to have to send mm -hmm. it back or throw it away. But now yes, at this yes. point, I'm just like, you know what? It didn't pass. Back over to my yep. team. They're going to fix it. I don't have to be emotionally connected. So we actually have a little boxes in the shop. Um, so we used to just throw it in one big bin and then yeah. we sort it for recycling. Um, but now we've got uh, five or six little boxes. Anything that fails goes in there. Oh, that's good. And the idea is that those boxes represent the commitment to the customer. Ooh. So if it goes in there, it can never come out. So we don't have seconds. Wow. So that's huge. everything that comes out of there has passed everything to a T. 
We even have seconds with Rex. We, we sell them at half price, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's huge, guys, I can tell you, because there are little things that happen, like tiny things. You took the part out of the machine and it, and it got scratched or bumped against the yeah. vise. You know, the, the anodizing wasn't just right. There's a weird spot yeah, on the it. The anodizing one kills me, yeah. But yeah, so the yeah. fact that you're that meticulous tells you how much Chris cares about his product, and that's fantastic. And that's one reason I've enjoyed carrying his product for years. I'm not just saying because he's here. <laughs> I really have enjoyed Carr because you guys know how passionate I am about Made in America, and he's that exact same passion with Made in Canada. Absolutely. That's awesome. So Absolutely. Yeah, to me, uh, anything you make yourself, I mean, it's, it's just a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think we should end right there on that high note. That's awesome. I really enjoyed you coming down. Thank you for making the journey, and I'm looking forward to doing more business with you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Next time I'm going to bring a bowl. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. Well, did you Thank like you. 77? Oh, yeah. No, it was good. I love it. Everything's good? The scent uh, bombs great. Good. Uh, feels good on the skin. Good. Despite the weak lather, I got, uh, and that lather is 100% on me. <laughs> I got, uh, it's smooth. Good, good. Yeah. Well, next time we'll have a bowl for you. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay, guys, we will see you next time. Please, if you haven't already done so, like, share this video with someone who needs to see it. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. Come on, come hang out with the cool kids. And we will see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks, guys. <laughs>